where, where are we at? Um, You're getting upset. He's being an idiot. So <laughs> oh, there's yeah. no contest. There's no no, contest. I didn't see. Man, listen. He's basically. He was saying that Izzy wouldn't be able to hang with those guys in the past, and I said fighting is evolved. Like every other sport has evolved. He would and definitely he hang. He would know. He would be a champion. Well, I'm saying, still. yeah. I mean, I, I don't necessarily like, disagree with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, like look at how the leg kick revolutionized MMA when it started really happening and dudes' legs breaking and going numb and guys like it really changed how people fought. Okay. Yes or no? Tell me. No, I agree. Okay. No, I, I agree with you. But almost, I'm defending him a little, not much, a little. <laughs> Get ready for this one. <laughs> right. Anderson Silva at his height. Oh, yeah. man. Against Izzy oh, wow. at his height. And we're not even sure if Izzy's at his height yet. Yeah. There, there wouldn't be one punch thrown. They're both counter strikers. Can, can you let the person I asked <laughs> the question saying. of? Just say. Or do I need yeah. to turn you off? <laughs> Give me your opinion. I think that's a phenomenal fight. No, it's an awesome fight. I think it's phenomenal. And, and I think. And it, I, 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 that's hard. Exactly. It's hard for me to say Izzy wins that. It's hard. But it's hard for me to say he loses too. They're both phenomenal, and I think it'd be a great. That's for me. It's like a, just a toss up. It's a pick me. I've always said a fight that I'm looking forward to seeing, covering, being at whatever is a fight that I can't pick a winner. Yeah. Not that I can't pick the correct winner. Yeah. I can't tell you who would win those. That yeah. Fight. Izzy or Anderson, and it's a fight I would love to see. Because what people do, which we'll never see, obviously. What people don't seem to understand or watch because they're just looking for blood and knockouts. Right is you have guys like Izzy and Anderson. People are throwing punches, and they're not stepping away from it. They're moving their face just enough to get out of your range and tag you and clip you. And for me, that stuff is so awesome to watch. Unless you're fighting Chris Weidman. And yeah. then you don't move your, your face fast enough. <laughs> yeah. Now, on Sunday, we changed our flight, and I told the UFCPR, and I meant this, that I would rather go to the grappling tournament on Sunday than the fight on Saturday. And that was so much fun. I don't know if you got to watch it. No. Uh, it was phenomenal. Bo Nickel was in it, who's a Penn State legend. Yeah. Um, on UFC mm -hmm. Fight Pass. I know you guys don't like grappling. You even said you'd rather stand up and watch them do that than the grappling. But try to, to watch the replay on uh, this UFC what I mean. Fight Pass. If I go see a grappling event, yeah. I will enjoy Watching you pass guard and grapple and do it. I've, I've grappled before. It's I hard. love you using the real words. Yeah. That's so awesome. I, I, like I, would, I would love to go watch that if that's what we're doing. Sure. But in an MMA fight, I want to see you. If you take downs, love it. That's why the um, Teixeira and Prochaska fight was so amazing because it was a great combination of both. Mm -hmm. They stood up and traded, and Prochaska showed you he was better on, the, on, on, on his feet. And then Teixeira got him down, did his ground and pound, kept him on the ground up until the very end. When he know he was able to flip it and get the um, the chokehold, but um, so I love I want to see parody in the ring. I want to see a combination of two. But if I have to pick, I will go striking. But if we're going to go watch no, wrestling, no, I understand. I'll watch that all day. Or and and, and I'm the day. opposite. I want to see the the jujitsu. I want to see the ground game. Yep. And I like watching the striking as well. Yeah. What I don't like are the buffoons who boo when it goes to the ground. Yeah. yeah. You know now the former one of my favorite co-hosts. You know who's so much better than that. <laughs> no way. Uh, it goes to the ground, and he starts yelling at a Kimbo Slice fight down in Miami. Stand him up! And then when they stood him up, he goes, put him on the ground! <laughs> people who are booing, period, yeah. and two people in there willing to get punched in their face to entertain you. Right. Like, shut up. You know, I, I think that's overused, just so you know. The, they're not there to necessarily, even though they think they are to entertain, they're there to fight. For sure. They're for there sure. To, to win the fight. That's what I liked about uh, Roy Nelson. He's like, I'm not here to entertain. I'm here to win a fight. Definitely. And if it means it being boring to win, I'll do that. And he yes. even said that on The Ultimate Fighter. And it got him in trouble with Dana and so forth and so on. Yes, you want to be entertaining, but when they say I'm here to entertain you, well, are you? When I, when I say entertain, not do what you want me to do right. to make you happy, but you're coming, you spent some dollars to come watch an event, you know, get away from your life for a couple hours, a few hours, you know, like that sort of entertainment. Do like, you do you think about that when you're playing? Do you think about the crowd and the fans and entertainment, or are you thinking? No, because of course I'm like, right. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love you being honest. Thank you. Because I, have, I, have, I, have, I don't care. There's one person. Or what are you talking about? I got an all pro in front of me. I got to get my job done. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. So you know, all these fighters, I'm here to entertain. Well, you could be more entertaining then. Uh, yeah. And don't put on the fight that you need to put on. And that's why Clay Guida has changed his style 
because the entertainment was going to put him in a nursing home. Yeah. You know, the Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yeah. No. I want to use that clip where he admitted, no, I'm just here to do my job. And, and, and <laughs> Stop also, the all pro. He also <laughs> refused to cut his hair because, you know, it looks like he gets hit because all the sweat off of his hair. Well, that's why the, he started the braids. Yeah. So, yeah, so. yeah. It's not that he refused to cut his hair. Oh, he started the braids because of that. So, perhaps to cut his hair, and I think for the same reason because it happened. It happened he had in the, the Ultimate Fighter. He too. had the samurai, right. the samurai bun, and, and during the fight, I could see it kept flopping over his face, and so he finally cut that off. I think there was that. an episode, and, and starting next Ultimate Fighter, I'm going to start keeping the notes. Yeah, you know, I write these notes, and then as soon as we have the person on, I I throw away because. My wife tells me to clean the house. I don't throw away the stuff she wants me to. Yeah. So I throw away. So I don't remember which girl it was, but she cut her hair because she was going to miss weight. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did that like two episodes ago. Well, right. I don't know. No, it wasn't two. It was two episodes. I think it was three. Maybe three episodes. Well, three's not two. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. I, I saw I saw a video of uh, Stipe and he was doing a podcast, and they're asking him about you know the possible fight you know with John Jones. You know, when is that? And he goes, you know, like, I haven't heard anything about it. It's all internet stuff. So he says that he's a full-time firefighter now. And UFC is like a side gig. He said, yeah, I trade every once in a while, but, like, I'm a full-time firefighter. And he's like, if I hear something about the fight, I will. He said he gets to his firefighting job. And whoever the head of it is, I don't know the name of it. The captain? The captain. The captain goes, hey, man, you need, like, the, the weekend of August 4th off? And he goes, no, why would I need that week off? Like, what are you talking about? He goes, you sure? Like, I heard. <laughs> he's like, he's like, dude, like, I'll tell you, I had a fight. Or he's trying to just see, like, hey, right. did you sign? Like, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. So I thought that was pretty funny and pretty dope that he's doing that. Let, let, let me get you on the schedule. When, and and Steve Pay has said that, you know, when it's his turn, he's still in there cleaning the bathrooms. Yeah. You know, that they take turns and all that kind of stuff. And, and I like that. Yeah. You know, that that's his job and it. You know, every once in a while, you got I'm sure it's not as clean as it normally would be by, <laughs> by the, the, you know, the, the recruits. But um, I want to see John Jones fight heavyweight. I, I, I do truly too. do. I really, really do. And I, I, I think the sport misses him, man. The sport misses him. They miss Connor. Whether or oh, not, sure. like whether or not those guys win, the anticipation, the just the, the shit, hype. Yeah, the, the hype the that goes on portion. behind. And you know, like when John is on a card and Connor's on a card, it's gonna be a stacked card because you don't waste those fans and those pay-per-views. So you're going to put on great fights and things like that. As so true as that is, you don't need to, though. Because yeah. Connor's on it. You don't need to stack it like this was over the weekend. Yeah. That was such an unbelievably stacked card. It was awesome. And, you know, you really didn't realize. You know, Robbie was originally on the undercard. Oh, my God. I almost forgot. Um, The guy, the, the, the last fight of the undercard. Okay. Oh, God. Getting the tall, the really, he's like 6'4". Real skinny. He's fighting. He's fighting 135, but he's like six foot four. Oh, uh, the tarantula. Oh my, Jalen Turner. God, he's awesome. We had him on in, in Atlanta. What a oh good guy. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's awesome. He I couldn't phenomenal. remember his name, but that was an amazing fight. And it was one of those things where you couldn't hear the commentator, but um, he's talking. He goes, you know, he said he wants to find. He wants to land a. He wants to find a big punch and land a big punch early because people aren't afraid of his power in this division. As soon as he says that, <laughs> boom, big right <laughs> And then gets to finish. I was like, oh, that's the best 45 seconds ever. Yeah, it was awesome. Real deal. And, was awesome. Um, Shout out to him. I, that was the last thing in my notes. Big, big stuff, and, and I'm excited for him. And he's a good guy. A yeah. good, I, I hate to call him kid, but, you know, yeah. a youngster. Uh, it was a great fight to watch. We're all kids compared to you, Randy. Well, that's point. true. That's, that's true. George Burns is, uh, isn't it, wasn't that his name? The, the comedian that died at 98? He's still a kid to me. Yeah. You know, so, so I get it. Uh, so this weekend, uh, another UFC. It'll be good uh, to watch that. We'll have uh, Jimmy out there covering it, our Las Vegas correspondent. And uh, anything in closing before we go? Yeah, I'm at International Fight Week. I saw you guys were hanging out with Carrot Top. Carrot Top uh, was cool. No, it looks like you know what I said to Carrot Top. So I know we only have a minute. So Jimmy went over to like his handler, or management, or whatever, and said, "Hey, can you, you you come on?" And then when he came on, the first thing I said is, "Yeah, we have a mutual friend." And Carrot Top kind of looked at me and said, "Yeah, Bob Huco." Because oh, yeah. Bob and, and Carrot are, are, are really good friends. So the, the interview will be played. I think we're going to re- uh, play it next week. Another great Florida quarterback, but not as great as the one. I'm going to I'm gonna need you guys to make a list for me for notable people that did notable things after 1988. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to 1988, because there's a lot of references y'all make, and I'm sitting here like, Well, you just got to go to the library and look this stuff up in the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> 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 That's a system to the process. Bob Huco played for the Bucks, played for the Gators, Okay. Uh, hooked in with Hooters. 
um, which is <laughs> needed when you need your VIP Hooters card that just came in the mail yesterday. Hey, hey. Dewey 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 you one of those. Dewey 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 set you free, I want to thank everybody who tuned in today. <laughs> Please check us out on YouTube, Knockout Space Radio, where how many 65,000 views or, so far? Or type us a letter. <laughs> <laughs> you have a typewriter. <laughs> turning him off. Uh, thanks for everything. Hit us up uh, on Twitter. We'll be back, unfortunately, with Matt next Wednesday. This is Knockout Radio, brought to you by Eight Men Strong and Staff Zone.